Mr. Olabisi Mokonjuola, who is an avid sportsman and an administrator. Um, BC, as it loves to be called, has been a mainstay in the dispute resolution practice of Olaniwo Ajayi, which is a top tier commercial law firm in Lagos, Nigeria. Um, over the past 15 years, his, his, foot, his fingerprints can be found in every brief, every mandate, and every successful judgment or award obtained from the Superior Court of Record in Nigeria. And lastly, can we have a round of applause for Mr. Olabisi? Thank you for joining us this morning. Olabisi, do you want to add yes, anything so to that? I, I was just going to uh, piggyback on what you said um, in terms of we need... Um, a change in the value chain, and I totally agree. Um, and one ne ne then needs to identify what exactly is this change in the value chain, and it's a lot, but we'll just pick a few of them and discuss them. I think the, 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 the low hanging fruits, right, which you can easily point to. So, infrastructure, it's easy to say, um, administrators, it's easy to say. What about the key things that we need to do? For me, the, the, one of the biggest issues is data. Do we have data gathering in Nigeria? Do we know the number of persons that do sports? Do we know the sports that they do? And by the way, sports is not a sport. Sport is business. And until we begin to see sports as business and not as a recreation, who says that you, somebody cannot pay you for jogging every morning when you wake up in your house? All of us wake up in the morning and we walk out in our estate. Who says you cannot get a sponsor? to wear their colors while you're working out every morning you wake up. For you, you are trying to keep fit. But for your investor, it's business. As you run around your estate, you're advertising someone else's products. We need data to achieve things like that. We need um, technocrats. During tea break, I was um, discussing with certain persons and I said to them that the Forget it, we have talent in Nigeria, whether here or in diaspora. So our problem is not talent. But when we bring these talents together, are we able to get the best of them? By the way, I do every sport, except for the physical sports. So um, um, before the last Olympics, Nigeria beat the US in basketball, we beat um, um, Argentina in basketball, and the whole world was looking out to see what we would do at the Olympics. But Olympics came and we were messed up because we understood that, oh, perhaps the coach did not get to train with the team, the coach was put in a different place, the players didn't have resources. So those are the kind of things that deter investors from coming into sports. Again, do we have an enabling environment? So I was excited when Shola bought into Sporting Lagos. He's doing a lot, but despite all of the buzz, Every Sunday, Unicorn is half empty. But that's our pride in terms of the way football administration or the way sports should be run. So we need technocrats to man all of these places. We need... Southampton is the last in the Premiership today, right? But every time they play, the stadium is full. People are not coming to watch and enjoy themselves. They are coming to make money. So for me, sports is beyond you know, a physical exercise, um, as she says, we need a change, but we, need, we then need to begin to identify those things that we need to change. When we begin to identify those things that we need to change, I can, I can tell us that Nigeria will be the best way because we have the talents, whether here or, <coughs> or in the diaspora. Thank you very much, Mr. BC. And this is for you, um, Mr. Olabisi. And I know when we talk of sports, especially as a Nigerian and mostly Nigerians, um, our default thought is to football. And when we mention sports, everyone is just thinking of football. So there are still different types of sports and emerging sports and niche markets present unique investment opportunities. Now, how do you think investors can identify and evaluate potential growth areas within the sports industry? Thank you. In terms of um, identifying potential growth areas, um, are, are the, what every investor wants is his returns. Um, and one of the things that would guarantee returns is the numbers in terms of the consumption. And so um, from the perspective of an investor, you're looking at 
where are the numbers going to come from? So I want to look at a sport where I'm sure that the consumers of that sport will give me the numbers that will ultimately make me to recoup my investments. The other point is, how easy is it to even recoup your investments? Um, it's easy to get money in, but to take your money out of the country, and that's for those who um, import capital. To get your money out of Nigeria, it's, 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 a, it's a equivalent task. I mean, sometimes even the, the, the bankers go to the black market to source for Forex. So that is one of the um, problem or one of the things that um, play in the mind of the potential investors. The other point is the, um, the, the regulatory landscape. Um, I, I see people that Nigeria is one of the most overlord countries in the world. But despite all of the laws that we have, nothing is working. And so it's not so much about laws, it's not so much about policies, but it's about implementation of the few policies and the few laws that we have. So um, coming to, to create a new law, to create a new policy would not solve it for me. Um, it's for us to look at what we have at the moment and see how we can um, tweak what we have and make the best out of it. The last point is this. Um, for investors, you, you don't necessarily have to believe in that sport. Um, and one sport that is um, making the waves these days is mixed martial arts. Mixed martial arts. Um, and you find that um, you have um, Lagosians who are on the streets burning their energy you know, on other things. Those energies can be converted to sports like mixed martial arts. It's an upcoming, it's an emerging area. Um, South Africa saw the queue, they've taken the queue. Um, South Africa is building what is now called the AFC, similar to what you have, which is the UFC. Um, South Africa is doing well with that. Um, we are still trying to get there, um, but um, for an investor, you want to spot such potentials. And because of the numbers we have in Nigeria, and that is why the telecom companies and the, you know, those companies in that space are doing very, very well, because Nigeria has the numbers. So for us, it's for us to identify that sport that has huge followership, um, invest in that sport and make sure that it's a sport that um, you can, it's not, it's not overburdened. So football is overburdened. But, uh, but we keep going back to football. Um, but, uh, and you can't run away from football. Um, but I've always said that um, if, you, if you have a good package, if you have a good package, you would attract the best of investors. And football is one package that we have, but we're not using it very, very well. And until we begin to invest more in our football, we will not we'll remain, we'll remain where we are. And what role do you think data will play in driving more investments into the sports industry in Nigeria? Um, BC, do you want to help us with that? No, I mean, this is the fundamental. <laughs> it's, 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 it's the fundamental. And, and let's start from the basic. So there is the current under 17 World Cup going on. Um, ideally, it's a punch of a button. We should be able to, from your own living room, ascertain the status of the ages of all of those players and not have to go do MIR. Um, in, the, in the earlier panel, we spoke about um, um, tower sports competition. You log in details of you know, um, the winners. So I want to look for the fastest 100 meter runner in my local government. And for me as a businessman, I want to make money. I go and key into that boy who is, three year, who is 10 years old in, in year five in his, univer in his um, secondary school. I start to nurture him. I start to sponsor him. I start to grow with him. Um, Toby was Toby Amundsen was was discovered like that when somewhere in the Jabu day when some teachers said, "Look, yeah, I mean, but you are not doing well as as a, as uh, as a, um, as, a, as an academician. Let's let's invest in, in your sports. That is what data does for you. Um, and so, and you can't go wrong with data. Um, data and technology, which is one of the things we must talk about. Tech, data and technology when put together. My brother here is developing an app, and I think we should talk to him. It helps to you know um, invest. It helps you, for whether, whether as a player or as an investor, it helps you to make up your mind. The reasons why the, the so-called developed countries are doing better than us is because they have the data to go back to. And for me, um, once we begin to... Uh, and that, 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 that's why I said that there are some low-hanging fruit. So let's record things ourselves. Let's record things ourselves. You can never go wrong with your data. Your data helps you to, pro, it helps you to plan. Your data even helps you to make investment decisions. And that is why you can never go wrong with data. Data and technology, when put together, would get you to um, what I like to call El Dorado. What data there does is that when you then write your sponsorship letters asking banks and what have you for monies, 
because you have programmed your events January to December, and you write them the September before the January, they're able to say, okay, you have an event in June. I will support your June event. And so take the money for that June event. But not when you write them in June, asking for money for a July event. Nobody will listen to you. So when you say that, oh, corporate organizations are not sponsoring, it's because you don't have a program that they can buy into. It's because you don't have an agenda. You don't have a bankable product. Let me put it that way. I tell my colleagues in our law forum that when you are asking someone to sponsor you in an event, you must demonstrate that your product is bankable. I must demonstrate that you have your timelines. So this is what you tend to, achieve, to get when you sponsor me. And this is the event I have. And so come and sponsor my July event. But you are writing me in October before. But not come and sponsor my July event and writing me in June. That is where we get it wrong most times. And data helps us to clarify all of these things. From, a, from an investor perspective, those are the kind of things they want to see. And it makes them know, oh, this is a brand that is thinking. Let me go with this person. So oftentimes, when we write letters and nobody answers us, it's because we are coming too late. All right, please. Ra a round of applause. So before we take questions from the audience, I'll just ask one round of sort of a playful question. Um, so maybe I'll start with you, BC. Um, what sports would you compete in if you were in the Olympics? Individual sports or team sports? In anyone. <laughs> I, I think there's more glory in team sports. Um, so Plus for our sports. panelists, that okay. has really been a great session. My name is Chuka. Um, I have actually learned a lot from this discourse today. The major thing we heard is data. You sit down, you pick up your phone, you know when Champions League will start, when it will end. In the next four years, World Cup. The next four years, we plan for World Cup. So all of us know when the World Cup will come. You start saving for that. You buy your ticket. Everything is clear there. Now, we're talking about data. Nigerians fail on that, seriously. My question now is, she has talked about data. He has talked about data. How do we, let me use the word evangelize, this serious matter about data in order for to move from its fledged as a business from its fledgling state to the state of the Premier League and the likes of Champions League and Olympics and what have you. The Premier League will know August certain time it will by June, if not because of the World Cup, it would have been May that it would end. But by June now, everything will end. So everything is timely. Why is Nigeria having such issues? And how can we evangelize the issue of data concerning our sports as a business? But, uh, with data, there are two things with data. There's a collection of the data, the real-time collection of the data. And that, I think that, that, that is where we get it wrong most times. There is no real-time collection of the data. And when we are then done the real-time collection of the data, there is then the implementation. So we must have persons who then study this and then know how to implement it. Um, so, so for me, that's like the, one of the easiest things for us to do. When we study, when we collect the data, I mean, so most times, there was a time I was trying to follow um, a Nigerian club game. I searched everywhere. I didn't find it in Nigeria. Even the NFF didn't have anything on their website. And then went abroad and I saw a real-time update of the game. I felt, so that's part of the problem we have. We should have a real-time collection and then post the collection. is the orientation of the data that we have. That, I believe, is one of the ways which we get things right. And of course, our administrators in UK, you know that at 7 a.m., a particular bus comes to your bus stop. If you miss that bus, it's until another five minutes before the next bus comes. That's what I'm advocating for. And I believe that um, with time, it may not, we may not get there today, but the foundation to getting there, we must begin to lay that foundation from now. 
and that is what our committee is doing with what she's doing and i must say that um they are doing a fantastic work and some of us are proud to be supporting what she's doing um i i have two questions i want to thank the panelists i've learned a lot really and i thank the organizers as well my name is Moyo. I'm a lawyer and also a business person and an entrepreneur. So opportunities interest me. So I have two questions. Number one, what challenge or challenges, if any, do MDAs in charge of sports, you know, present to a potential investor? And I'm asking this because I think I read a story some years back where someone was trying to invest in um, badminton or like in a badminton, a player, a, you know, a young player in badminton. And then some agency came up and said, oh, you can't do that. You have to give us the money or something like that. I can't really remember the story. So that's my question. Like, what challenges would they present? If somebody wants to bring money into, let's say, let's say tennis. Like, I have a vision that, like, why can't, they, why can't Nigeria win US Open or Wimbledon? Why? Because the PR effect of that is so massive. But we often don't look at that. We just say, ah, it's just one person. But if one person wins Wimbledon and is a Nigerian, the amount of brand energy that just goes around that is insane and so there's value there so the question is what challenges could those mds present that's number one number two and when you mentioned going to watch matches in the stadium and you mentioned the example of that uh, the club you know in lagos i asked myself okay why haven't i gone to watch a match and it dawned on me that i already envisaged some challenges like, okay how do i get there i probably can't park anywhere and there's there are like louds everywhere how do i enter i don't even know how much the ticket is you know, what if it's hot? Like, I was just thinking of this question, and these are why I wouldn't personally go to watch a match yet. So, the question is like a chicken and an egg thing. What do we fix first? Do we fix the quality of the, the pitches, the quality of the stadiums, and the whole experience, the production? Or do we fix the consumption? Like, okay, get people to watch it first. If, the, if their eyes there, then somebody will say, okay, ah, people want to watch a match. Let me bring one billion there so that, you know, what do we fix first? You know, in that thing, like sort of like a chicken and egg thing for me. So maybe you could shed more light on that. Thank you. To be politically correct, um, I think the answer to your first question is corruption, um, and and then MDs must begin to not to do things in ministry way. Begin to run these things as if it were a business. When we change that perspective, things will change. And then to your second que uh, um, question, um, again, is data, right? So I know, for instance, and I'm not trying to um, hype or um, I've not been paid to, to hype any particular club, but this club we talked about, I once saw somewhere where I think they had the Uber partnership where once you enter a promo code, you get a discount to go to the stadium to watch your, your um, and then they have the hospitality box as you have abroad. But you wouldn't find these things if you don't search for them. So we have them. But you just need to look for them and you find all of these things available for you to make up your mind where to go to. But of course, the investor wants a bankable product. Nobody is coming to watch a game played on sand. You want to watch a game on lush green grass. You want to watch a game where there are no era boys to disturb you to obtain you. You want to watch a game where your car is parked and you can go back and your car is intact. So of course, you must fix all of those things too. So it's, I mean, as you said, it's a chicken and egg situation. But let's focus first on the infrastructure. And then those other things will come. And that is, again, on infrastructure, she's doing a good job. Every stage here is now converted to a joint these days. It's the beginning of our problems, right? Um, why, can't, why can't the state government even um, mandate certain persons, or even give land, free, free land, come and build a sporting facility in this, in, in this area and not convert it to a car park? It's, for the state government, it's better than a car park where they can make money than to donate that land to somebody, you and I, to build a sporting infrastructure. Those are the kind of things we need to, uh, to surmount to make these things more invest um, um, innovative. And thank you. To, uh, it's really, really interesting. A lot to learn, a lot to unpack. Um, thank you to Ms. Kechi, Mr. BC, and Mr. Guillermo who have joined us this afternoon. We really appreciate you. Thank you for your insight, and thank you for all you're doing for the sports ecosystem. Mm -hmm.